Today we're going to be breaking down a great wide receiver football IQ quiz to test your knowledge of the position. So a lot of you guys were asking about zone coverage. So this video is going to be solely based on zone coverage and how you guys can run routes to beat certain zone coverages. So if you're not familiar with our quiz style videos, what I do is I show a pre-snap example. I ask you a series of questions about the pre-snap example. I ask you about the route, how you would run the route. I give you guys a chance to pause the video and think about your answer. And then we go in and break it down why the answer is right or wrong. So first example here is going to be from Hunter. Renfro. So how would you guys run a 10 yard out versus this specific type of coverage? Now, mind you, the offense is in the red zone. So take that into consideration with this route. So how would you guys run a 10 yard out versus this specific zone coverage? And obviously the ball is to the inside over here where I'm drawing these arrows. So how would you guys run a 10 yard out versus this look? So you guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answers. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So first things first, as a wide receiver, whether I'm facing press coverage, whether I'm facing zone coverage like this, I'm looking for two specific things when it comes to structuring my plan on my route. I'm trying to look for this DB's leverage, and I'm trying to look for the distance. How close or how far is he from me? So if we have to run a 10-yard out, and this DB's sitting at about 8 yards, now he's 8 yards away, so that's pretty close to my break point, which is at 10. So it's not necessarily a form of press coverage. It's not necessarily a form of, you know, catch man coverage. It's definitely not a form of off man because of his leverage where he is playing outside leverage. Now, could this be off man? Yeah, it could be. You would run it the exact same way. Off man zone would be the exact same way. So he's about eight yards away and he's outside leverage. So if I have to run an outside breaking route, what is this DB's responsibility being outside leverage? Whether he's press, catch man, off man or zone, his job is to force us to the inside and not get beat to the outside. So that's kind of a problem when I have to run an outside breaking route. Now, if you guys said that you would take off, you would run hard and you would attack this DB's inside shoulder and inside hip, you would sell vertical in the goal is to get him to flip, that would actually be wrong in this situation. Because remember what I said about this. I said that on this specific route example, guys, that we're in the red zone. So in the red zone, this DB is not going to be threatened by you running hard and trying to sell a deep route. Because again, we're in the red zone. He's not super threatened by that. What he is threatened by is an inside breaking route. So that's what you would want to sell. You would want to angle your stem. You'd want to go at his out inside shoulder, his inside hip, angle your stem towards that, but give him some type of inside fake. And that's what Hunter Renfro does. Now, before I play this clip full speed and show you guys how he runs this route, guys, if you're a wide receiver and you would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this off, season. We're coming out to 10 more states across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. So if you guys are interested and want to sign up for one of our remaining camps that are not sold out all on the right side of the screen in Buffalo, Atlanta, Houston, Philly, Detroit, Boise, or Los Angeles. Guys, again, check out that very first link in the description below. That's where you can get all the information to train with, again, myself and my staff of coaches. So we have 10 more states remaining on our tour. Only seven states have available spots. So guys, again, very first link Link in that description below, two day long QB and wide receiver camp. So now let's play this slipper from Renfro full speed. So he comes off the ball, but you see how he's attacking the inside shoulder with a move called a rocker step. So that's a great move to sell because again, like I said, we are in the red zone. This guy is not threatened by us pushing vertical, putting my head down, running hard. Maybe if we were on like the opposite 20 or maybe the opposite 30, he'd be threatened by that. But again, this is still a way, this is still. A threat, an inside route is still a threat to him in this situation, right? Even if he's in zone, even if he's an off man, he doesn't want to get beat on a quick post because again, we're in the red zone. That's an easy touchdown. He wants to force everything to his help, but he also doesn't want to get beat. So when we come at him and we attack that inside shoulder and I'm selling this inside route, a rocker step is where you step in the direction you are going first. It's essentially a one, two at the top of the break. So he steps first cuts inside of our body frame. It's a hard step and we are pushing off of that cut and throwing my hip, stepping outside of his frame with this inside move. You see how his hips, his shoulders are turning, but where's he attacking? Inside shoulder and inside hip. The reason why you want, want you wouldn't want to try to run around him is, guys, On an, and obviously it's easier, fellas. When I have to run an out route, a corner, a comeback, I would love to get to the outside because it's easier to do that when that DB's on your inside hip. But if we try to force this outside release and this DB keeps his leverage, because remember, pre-snap, we saw that he was outside leverage. He keeps that leverage and forces the sideline. Even if I get to the outside of him and break it off, even even if I'm fast with the break, but I don't give my quarterback enough room, that's not a good route. That is not a quarterback friendly route. We have to give the quarterback space to throw me open and space to operate. So that's a textbook right here from Hunter Renfro. It's a great rocker step attacking that inside hip and inside shoulder to win against that 
outside shade off man or outside shade zone. So now next example here, guys, staying with the theme of the video, we're focused all on zone coverage and off man coverage in this wide receiver football IQ quiz. So this next example is how would you guys run a post curl versus this specific type of coverage, right? So you got Brandon Ayuk right here. He's in a, he's in a stance switch. So his outside foot is up. That's mainly for timing and like steps of the route. But, um, but the quarterback is over here to where I am drawing these arrows. So how would you guys run a post curl versus this specific coverage? You guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answers. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So this DB, let's talk about our pre-snap um, like process, I guess you could say, right? So this post curl is probably going to be at about like 8 to 10 yards, right? How far off is this DB? This DB is sitting probably about 7 to 8 yards off. His eyes are to the inside. He's outside leverage. His stance is almost like turned in a sense. So that looks a lot like zone coverage from this DB, right? Now, remember, when a DB is lined up outside leverage, what's his goal? Don't let us get to the outside. Force everything to the inside. Because in zone coverage, what does he obviously usually have to the inside? He has safety help, or maybe it's a linebacker dropping. Maybe it's like a Tampa two situation or some type of robber situation. So he's got help to the inside, right? So he wants us to run to the help. So if you guys said, if I want to run this post curl, I'm just going to push up vertical attack his inside shoulder and inside hip, then break to it and break down. That's wrong because that DB is going to be right on your hip and he has safety help. You want to create a bigger window for your quarterback. So if you guys said you were going to stem him to the outside and attack his leverage, that would be correct because remember his goal. Don't get beat to the outside, especially in zone coverage. So we come off the ball and we start running, acting like I'm trying to go to the outside. What's this DB going to do? He's going to weave. He's going to keep his leverage, which makes a bigger window for the quarterback. So watch how Ayuk runs this route. So he attacks his DB's leverage. DB widens. Exactly what we thought he was going to do. Breaks off on this post curl. And you see, we're able to get separation. And that safety help to the inside is nowhere to be found. He makes this catch and then can turn up and get some yards after the catch. So guys, you see how when you attack somebody's leverage, how much he moves that is ultimately what we want to do guys so like think about it when it's ever it's off man or whenever it's zone there's two rules of thumb you either want to attack an inside shoulder inside hip or you either want to attack a hip either inside or outside i'll talk about what routes you want to do that on or you want to attack his leverage whether it's outside or whether it's inside so if the route is breaking away from the leverage so a post a dig a curl a post curl and this db's outside leverage what do we want to do we want to attack his leverage the route is breaking away from his leverage. So let's try to widen him to make a bigger window. If I just go run it, I'm running right into the help. And that guy will probably be on my hip because I didn't get any separation. Now, if the route is to the leverage, right? Let's say, for example, I got to run a 10 yard out. I got to run a corner. I want to attack his hip. I want to attack the inside hip to try to force him to flip, try to get him to bite inside. So I give my quarterback room. Now let's flip it. Let's say the DB's inside shade, right? Inside shade off man coverage, right? Seven to eight yards off. Say I got to run a 10 yard out. I want to stem him inside, get him to keep that leverage, bigger window for my QB. That guy's help is the sideline in that case. Then let's say he's inside and I got to run a post. I want to attack his inside hip and his, or excuse me, his outside hip and his outside shoulder to flip him so I could slip under him. Right? So that's the rule of thumb whenever it's off man or zone coverage. Route breaks away from the leverage, let's attack the leverage. Route breaks to the leverage, let's pick a hip and try to get him to flip. Okay. So now, this next example here, you guys. This is a form of a zone coverage. I'm going to give away the zone coverage pre-question that I ask you guys, just so you kind of have an idea of this, because we never really go over this type of coverage on this page. But this is something called press bail, which is a form of zone coverage. So if you're trying to you know, get better at reading defenses as a receiver, maybe you're a quarterback and you're watching this and you like watching this because you know it gives you a higher football IQ, you know how your receivers run routes. Whenever you're trying to read defenses, you never want to rely on the corner to tell you all about the defense because sometimes a corner will disguise what he's doing. He'll come down like he's in press and then he will bail out of there like in this example. Called a bail technique. Some people call it press bail. It's a form of playing like cover three or cover four. Remember like cover three, let's say I got a DB here, single high free, and then a DB over here. Cover three is where they break the field up into three deep thirds. But this corner doesn't need to be seven to eight yards off to play cover three. He could show press and then bail. Okay, so I want to pre preface that question that I'm about to ask with that kind of explanation there. Okay, so now question asked, how would you guys run a fade route versus press bail when the DB is slightly, I'm actually not going to give away his leverage or anything else about that. How would you guys run a fade route versus this type of of press bail coverage. How would you guys run a fade versus this type of press bail coverage? You guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. 
All right, let's break this thing down. So first things first, come up to the line. Maybe he comes out in press coverage. Like, let's say he's like right up in my face. Okay, I'm going to give him a release. I'm going to give him a move, and then I'm going to go. Then let's say as soon as the ball's about to be snapped, he bails out of there. All of a sudden, my plan has to change. Guys, as a receiver, the thing is when it comes to having a plan, being able to react, it comes from film study. You, you're going to be matched up against a team that you're going to have probably, let's say it's a Monday, right, because we're posting this on Monday. Let's say you're playing a game on Friday. Let's say we're in the season, and you're on Monday, and you're you're scouting out, you're trying to get ready for the team that you're going to play. You're going to have games of film on this team and you're going to know how their DBs like to play. So if their DBs like to play a lot of press bail, mentally, I want to be prepared for that. That is not something I'm going to see pre-snap, but if they go into press bail, I want to be prepared. I want to have taken those mental reps studying film to know how I'm going to structure my route versus that press bail look, right? So he comes out and press bail. Suddenly the plan changes. I got to react. A great receiver is somebody who can react on the fly and react quickly. So he starts to play press bail. We know if he's outside leverage bailing he does not want us to get to the outside so a lot of receivers what they will do is they'll just go oh crap i'm just gonna go try to run around him right that's not the way you run this route guys because as soon as you try to force it around him that db is going to widen and where's he going to squeeze you to the sideline and if the db's here and the sideline's here, and there's no room for the QB, I don't care who it is, that's almost an impossible throw. So that's what this receiver does. He comes off the ball, and he just kind of tries to run around him. That's not enough, guys, to be able to get separation. That's a great stack. The D DBs are taught in zone coverage to stack us as a wide receiver. You know, when we're going against man, we want to stack the DB and get him trailing us. DBs are taught to stack us, and that is a textbook stack there by that DB because this receiver didn't threaten him to the inside. So there's a move, guys, that this receiver kind of does a little bit. See how he takes like a kind of a hard step right here? This step is considered a vertical set. A vertical set, they call it that because it sets you up vertical. It sets you back to the outside when you're running a fade route. And it's the best move to use when you have to run a fade versus zone when he's seven to eight yards off outside shade or when he's in press bail. Because what you want to do is you want to try to get this DB to crash down on a post. At the end of the day, right, he's still guarding you. It's not like he's just an idiot and is just a robot. Oh, I'm in cover three. If this guy tries to run on a post, I'm not going to bite right? Yes, he has safety help, but if he doesn't have any threats to his zone coverage, especially at an NFL college level, that guy's going to run with us on the post, especially if he doesn't have any threats. He's not a robot. This is not Madden. So to get him to crash down this vertical set, it's essentially just a hard fake to the inside with your inside foot. It's almost like a rocker step, like we saw Hunter Renfro do, but it's just one step. It's one hard step with this foot. But when you step with that inside foot, you want to try to enter this DB's line of vision. In zone coverage, usually his eyes are in the backfield reading the number two receiver to see if he's going to be running into his zone, maybe like on a deep out or whatever the case, or maybe a corner, right? So his eyes are there. You got to enter his line of vision. This has got to be a hard step. It's got to be a big step. You don't want to reach, but you want to sell this thing, your hips, your shoulders, everything about it's got to look like a post, guys. You want to turn your belly button almost to the opposite sideline, and it's got to be a hard cut. Because if we could get him to just stop his feet slightly, that's easy for me to get a step. And when you throw that vertical set cut, you could push off of it, and that will give you some more acceleration, some more burst, so we can actually stack over him. But we have to sell it. It can't just be like a subtle step like you see Mooney do right here, because that's just not enough to get that guy to crash, and he'll be able to stay stacked on top of us the entire time.